And for this one, you want to start the domain controller. Um, the very first step in exercise one for the appendix says log on to your first computer, which installed Windows Server 2012, using the administrator account and password of the password. Everything in all of these exercises, even though we have the GUI available to us, um, is done command line. And I, I may I may walk through it once with the GUI as a reminder or refresher of how we did things last semester with Server 2008. But there's definitely a trend towards using command line commands, um, even the GUI and server environment, to, so just kind of get used to that. But maybe we'll go through the commands graphically when we start adding them to the domain. For right now though, I want to um, just log in here. And our first exercise is pre preparing our computer to function as a domain controller. Server manager is always going to start up automatically, so just wait for that to start. If you try to do anything else, it just sort of bogs down your machine. And we can in fact close this down because we worked with the command prompt. To get from the command prompt, it says open Windows um, PowerShell prompt um, in elevated. So I can do that by right clicking on PowerShell in the lower left hand corner. And when I see Windows PowerShell above here, um, well, I can actually run as administrator right from here. Or I can right click and say run as administrator. So I want to run PowerShell as administrator that brings everything up as an elevated mode. Now, command prompt and PowerShell are very, very similar, and many commands are interchangeable. Um, we will be using the command prompt, though, and to get to the command prompt within PowerShell, it is just CMD. You can notice the difference because PowerShell has the front of the prompt being PS for PowerShell, and then your prompt, and this is just your regular prompt here. The first thing we want to do is um, give ourselves a static address. Um, in the note for the learning plan, it says to use a different IP addressing scheme than we are using, that the book is using. They're using a 10.10.10 .10 network. We want to use a different network just so it works with our VMware network address translation and all that kind of stuff. And that is the 192.168.118 network. And then we keep the fourth octet the same throughout the book. Again, the learning plan uh, details that. Okay, so I can do a net sh for net shell, and that's just the commands. So if you don't know what these command, net shell commands are, you can look them up online. They give you a whole lot, list of them. Otherwise, write in the book. These are correct. I'm working with IP version 4. We're not going to do version 6. And I want to set the address. I'm going to give us an address, an Ethernet address, Ethernet port. Um, I don't believe so. And again, I'm changing my address then, 192.168.118. I'm keeping the fourth octet the same, though, as dot .10. So net sh interface IP version 4 set address ethernet static 192.168.118.10. And as in most things command line, um, no news is good news. So if you don't get anything back, that usually means a good thing. If something comes back and says error or incorrect syntax, you use 192.168.118.10. So everything in the book is listed as 10.10.10.x, .10 and our servers are going to be actually, our first server is 10, our second server is going to be 20, our third server is going to be 30, and our fourth server is 40. So instead of 10.10.10.10, .10 .10 .10, it's going to be 192.168.118.10. Okay. Now at this point, we do in fact have an IP address. I can do an IP config, and I can see that I have an IP address of 192.168.118.10. I don't have a default gateway though, 
and I don't have a domain name servers on here, so I really can't get anywhere. So if I try to ping something right now, it's not going to work. This is all that's required to get these activities to work, though, is that this is a domain controller, and the other servers need to be able to see this. We're going to take it one step further, it's not in the book, um, of just adding DNS and adding our domain gateway as well. Um, so let's see here. We want to add a default gateway, first of all, because it's not on there. And that command, oh, let me look this up again. Is a net sh again. Net sh interface, IP version 4. And I'll use the set DNS servers. All one word. Ethernet in quotes again. It's going to be static. 192.168.118.2. Oh, I do. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm not I know, I'm sorry. No, 192.168.118.2. And, and that's a VMware thing. So if you look under the configuration for the VM virtual network editor, it's saying that your default gateway in that 118 environment is in fact 118.2. Typically, you'd be seeing addresses like .1, 118.1. Set DNS servers all separately. Set space. Okay. And then DNS servers is one word. Oh, that's one word. And then we add a primary at the end of it. And that should be our command. Primary? Yes. And I hope this is working. So just continuing on, we want to then um, rename the computer. Normally, we would have done this to the GUI. Right on the first screen, it says configure this local machine. Um, and it said, well, I'll even show you real quick. Under server manager, <clears throat> it says configure this local machine. That's the most common thing that you start with. And right up here is computer name. And if you remember doing this last year, uh, we clicked on this and it actually brings you into the system properties, which you could go through by yourself. And then a lot of people have typed in the description instead of the name. You actually have to click on change and you just sort of change your name and that kind of stuff. We're going to do it through command line just because it's fun. <clears throat> and the command is net dom. And the command is rename computer. So net dom, N E T D O M, space, rename computer, all one word. And so you don't have to type in that crazy computer name. You can use the Windows variable, which is percent computer name percent. And that is the variable of the current computer name. So you don't have to do win dash, blah, 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 remember all that. And we're going to rename it. We're going to say slash new name colon, and then using a capital D, capital C. The new name would be case sensitive. No spaces between the slash new name colon DC. The operation will rename the computer from that win 68 LAC whatever to DC, certain services such as certificates, rely on a fixed machine name, just giving you all those warnings. Are you sure you want to proceed? Absolutely, I want to proceed. So I um, type Y and hit enter. And it says the computer needs to be restarted to complete the operation. And the command did complete successfully. The next step is step five is restart, restart the computer and log back on as the administrator account. We can use the little down arrow, the, the go, take our mouse down to the lower right hand corner. Go down to settings and then power. Or from the command prompt, since we're already there, we just type shutdown dash 
slash r for restart, and then put a time of, I'll just put one second. Because it wants to restart it with that new name. <clears throat> so is the DNS um, issue that we had before going to matter? It's, it's definitely not going to matter for anything in these lab activities. It's not going to matter. It's only going to matter that you can't get it to the internet then. Um, I know it was working. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure out what happened. Because right, I got the same issue, but then it seemed like anyone else. Yeah, I, I know that's kind of weird. And when I was working with it, it didn't have an issue. All I did was give it a DNS address, and I gave it a default gateway address, and I was out on the internet with no problems. Maybe I should do through the GUI just to, just to get it done. <laughs> okay, maybe I will. Why not? Still like to know what happened to my desktop, though, of why I can't get to the network any longer. Yeah, I can't get to the internet anymore. The next step is, um, again, we want to be adding um, the, the domain services, Active Directory domain services on here. That is where we would go to add roles and features typically in the past. We're going to do it through um, the console prompt, though. So again, right-click on PowerShell, and we'll run it as administrator, and then, switch to command. and then type CMD to switch to command prompt again. Let's run the command prompt. Now this is a longer command, much more um, possible to make typos. So it's add dash windows feature, all one word. And the next word is ad dash domain services. And then we do use an extra parameter of a dash include management tools. Now this is right out of the book, um, step six on page 627. Oh, you know what? I bet you we're not supposed to do that command prompt. We type exit. What? PowerShell? Yeah. Oh. Don't. Yeah. Just type exit once. It keeps you in the PowerShell. I jumped ahead. And then retype that. Yep. Include management tools. There we go. Much better. Otherwise, in the GUI, you go to roles and services and features, and you scroll down, you click the little box that says Active Directory, Domain Services. In the GUI, this would have been under Server Manager, Add Roles and Features. It is installing the background, so this might be slow. Yeah. It even says server manager not responding. Yep. Yeah, it's busy in the background. And this is very similar to 2008. You have this initial screen, which you could click and skip for the future, and then you click next. Um, a little bit different. You can role based, feature based installation, and remote desktop services. Um, these are all the defaults. And then, do you want to do it from this server or a different one? And now, here's where you actually um, would have just checked this box that said Active Directory Domain Services and then click Next and Install. It's grayed out right now because it is installed, or at least it's installing. And But this is the command. Is the PowerShell. 
Okay, it will give you a warning. Um, automatic update is not enabled and so forth. Um, you may want to do that. Um, the book's not having us go through that, so we'll just stick with the book right now. We can always do updates later. Once we're done with this, um, and we click, then we can actually go into Server Manager. And if we refresh it, it should give us a little flag up there saying, right there, that something needs to be done. So if I click on the flag, everybody get that far? Not yet. Correct. This is important. So I'll wait for everybody to catch up to this. And then continue here. So once you once you get that add the Active Directory completely installed, um, up on the flag, you can if it doesn't show up there, click the refresh button here. And then by the flag, you click on the flag, it tells you what needs to be done. And there's a post deployment configuration for the Active Directory. We want to make this a domain controller. This will be your main server for your entire network. So you click on promote this to a domain controller. And we've been somewhat similar to this in 2008. Do we want to go to an existing domain? Do we want to um, a new domain in existing forest or a whole new forest? And we're choosing a whole new forest. The root name is then going to be, um, for the new forest, is going to be contoso.com. Contoso.com. And this is the top of page 9. So, I'm sorry, step 9 on page 628. Thank you. <laughs> no, step 9, page 628. Contoso.com. And I click next again. So it's building a new forest, the database for the new for the new um, environment, and most of these end up being defaults. I don't believe we change anything here. Here, domain services, global catalog. Oh, we do need a password though for a restore mode. Uh, the DSRM password is going to be the same password that we had before. So we kind of have to wait for it. Everything else is default? Yes. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to wait. It's working across the top there. Okay, so now that we're here, PA dollar sign dollar sign W zero R D. I had lots of um, lots of those trees to plant, so I'm just gonna follow through. If you need to review this, I'll have the video out there so you can check back on it, but I'll sort of just walk you through these. Um, there's nothing we do on this page. The next couple pages won't do anything. It's all the defaults. Ignore the the D, uh, the warnings. But specify DNS delegation, we just click next on there. Um, the net BIOS name, additional information, we just click next when it comes up. So the net BIOS remains for the person we don't do anything? No, it defaults to Contos and we leave that. So we click next. The location of files, it says use the default and click next. And at this point in the book, in step 14, it says that we should get a directory services restore mode administrator password dialog. And I didn't find that when I was reviewing through this, so, but it seemed to work afterwards, so I'm just going to skip that step. And then it says review the options in page 15, uh, step 15, which is right here, review options, and just click next. So I'm not sure where that password thing went. 
Um, in the prerequisites page, just click install. So it's going to view everything here, make sure that everything is actually you know, where it needs to be, and we can click install. When this comes up, we just click install and let it do its thing. The only other activity I'm going to do yet is exercise two with you. <coughs> just because it doesn't tell you specifically the steps to do that. So I'll walk through exercise two with you. Um, I'm going to leave exercises three, four, and five for you to work together in groups with. But that's all we're going to get through today is those are just having those domains. I'm sorry, those servers join the domain. And it's all command line, um, and they just walk you sort of through that. Just make a note, though, anywhere where it says 10.10.10.something, .10 change that to 192.168.118.something. But always keep the last octet the same. This is going to reboot when it's all done. Computer's being restarted because the Active Directory Services was installed or removed. In this case, it was installed. And that's going to reboot. When it comes back up, you should see that you're logging into the domain controller now instead of into a local machine. Let's see if it comes up that way. That takes a while, but it does eventually reboot. And when it does reboot, you can go ahead and sign in. And now you can see that you're logging into Contoso instead of onto the local machine. I'm logging in. And that is officially the end of activity one or exercise one. What I'm gonna try to do, as long as I'm in here, I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out some of this IP stuff. I'm gonna do it through the GUI though, so the command line. I'm going to configure this local server. Under the Ethernet, I'm going to the Ethernet, and all it does is bring you to the control panel for um, network connections. So I want to go to, let's see, properties, IP version 4. I'll type in my IP address. My default gateway should be 192.168.118.2. DNS. Well, let's leave DNS there. Let's see what it does. So now. Let's go to PowerShell. Let me see if I can ping something. And it does work. So I'm out on the network. You can do Windows updates at that point. So you will be on your own private network, the 192.168.118 network. And also because of you know network address translation and because of default gateway, um, we can get out to the internet as well. So we're good with that. So that is exercise one.